I'm Andy Orm from O'Reilly Media. I'm talking to Daniel Inohosa today. He is the author of Testing with Scala, a new O'Reilly book. So, thanks for talking to me today, Daniel. All right, thanks for inviting me. Yes, you, you were just finishing up the book, and I thought we'd talk a bit about testing. You're big on test-driven development, and I wonder what Scala, uh, what makes Scala different from something like Java or JavaScript when it comes to testing? Um, I think it's the uh, the loose syntax uh, with Scala uh, makes it a lot easier. I think having the ability to do what's called behavior driven design, where the lang uh, well Scala the language itself allows you to uh, write out your specifications in a long string format, and then define what your tests are going to look like, as opposed to the old JUnit style or test ng style of testing where you'll usually have your you'll describe your tests in a camel case format which doesn't necessarily uh read very well so th the way uh scala was designed um i think it it helps the test driven developer express themselves in a better way than than using just uh plain java i noticed that some of the tests look very much natural language and they also let you embed strings that let you print out a lot of information. Mm -hmm. That is correct. There is also uh, something called raw string in, in Scala. So if you wanted to make a regular expression as part of your test, um, you can do so without having so many backslashes. Um, and you're able to express the regular expressions the way everybody else does. Um, you don't have, you're not confined to the Java way of um, expressing yourself in, in a uh, regular expression. Uh, that's just one example of some of the fancy string processing you can do also with your testing. Your regular yes. Testing. Now, you talk um, near the beginning about two basic frameworks, and I wonder what the differences are and why you'd use one. It looks like one is more advanced. Why would you use each one? So the difference between Scala tests and Specs 2, I think, is what you were looking for and what kind of language you were looking for. Both have... Uh, different kinds of matchers, which is the different language that you use to make assertions. I think for one thing, you'll probably feel more comfortable with one over the other. But the way Scala Test and Specs 2, uh, they also have different focuses. Scala Test has what's called a sugar uh, for uh, EasyMock. And so it, it, de it decided to use EasyMock as their mocking framework. Specs 2 decided to use Mockito. So the choice you make is probably going to be dependent on which kind of mocking framework you wish to use. Scala test has a variety of different specs. Specs 2 has two. So if you wish to express yourself in different ways, I would probably suggest Scala test uh, just because it does offer that. Specs 2 offers uh, things like uh, a data table, which Scala test does not. So if you are looking for more table uh, driven tests, then uh, Specs 2 would probably really be nice for you. Um, both have integration sugars with uh, Scala Check, and Scala Check is um, a library that allows you to create fake data and lots of fake data to regularly uh, test your um, test your objects. So depending on uh, what you're looking for, what kind of language you're looking for, what kind of tool integration you're looking for that'll probably lead you to decide which is the best framework for you to use. And with your answer, you got pretty deep into some test-driven development ideas. Let's go back to mocking. Uh, make sure the um, listeners know what you mean by mocking, and then describe easy mock and the uh, Mokito a bit. Okay. And also, uh, there's also a Scala mock, which is a uh, brand new library. So the idea behind mocking is it is used for test-driven development, and it's used because in test-driven development, speed is essential. So not only programming speed, but only the speed, to, uh, but also the speed to run your tests. So when you're actually doing test-driven development, um, you go along in a very fast manner, and what you need to do is you need to create a mock of something that can possibly take a lot of time, would possibly go out to the internet, or um, anything else that is uh, too big for a unit test. You want your unit test to be fast. So for something like writing to a file system, what you would like to do is you would like to mock out 
writing to the file system, you would like to mock out writing to a database, querying a database, uh, writing a, over the wire on the internet or anything like that. So you would you would typically like to mock out that behavior so it's not actually happening. Because again, you want these tests to run not only for your sake to get a, a, a quick feedback, but you also want a quick feedback for others when you possibly commit this code and you have something like Jenkins reporting on on how your um, your project is doing. So the idea for mocking is that it kind of creates a stunt double and that stunt double you can choose to program it however you want. It's very much like a robot. You can program it however you want and it's going to act out every answer there for you. So when you actually hit that mock it's going to give you the answer that you have pre-programmed. And so if something goes awry um, the mock will throw the flag and your test will fail. So that's the idea behind uh, mocking and it's it's primarily only used for test-driven development for the first phase of testing which is unit testing. There are different phases of testing. Test-driven development is unit testing. Uh, it is to be isolated. There are other phases of testing like integration testing, security testing, acceptance testing, and so on. But for test-driven development, unit testing and isolation and mocking are all uh, combined together uh, to, you know, form one behavior. And there are three frameworks for doing that, you said? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah. So there's easy mock, and that was the, the first um, really popular mocking tool. And that works with Java. And of course, since it works with Java, since it is a JVM language, it also works with Scala. There is also Mockito, uh, which was inspired from EasyMock. Um, but it, uh, it offers uh, some different behaviors of what you can do. You could do partial mocking. Uh, you can do, um, you don't have to replay uh, your mocking. So they have, a, they have some more enhanced features. One of the things that Mockito had before EasyMock did was the ability to mock out classes. Um, since then, EasyMock is able to mock out classes. So both of those are continually in use now uh, in, the, in, in any JVM language, but particularly in Java. And you can use those in Scala. Now, what uh, there's a new library out called Scala Mock. It is uh, currently, um, I believe, in version 2.4. Um, but uh, what that does, it allows you to do some some mocking that you never thought you would be able to mock before. So things like, uh, um, well, definitely you can do classes, you can do traits, but you you could also mock things like objects. And objects are a singleton object in Scala. And what that is meant to do is replace the idea of a static method. So um, it's able to mock those objects out. So you can do just about anything and everything you can uh, with Scala mock, as opposed to a Mockito or an Easy mock. And then we also talked about generating data. You said there are problems mm -hmm. with doing that. Uh, I noticed that there are lots of parameters that a programmer can control to say what kinds of data you want to use a data set but take out parts of it and so forth. Do you want to summarize mm -hmm. a few of the things that you can do? Okay, well there's this library called Scala Check, and what that's able to do is it's able to take uh, automated uh, test testing and uh, and enhance it even more. So what that's able to do is you're able to describe to ScalaCheck what kind of data do you want to uh, test on. So if you want to test on every integer from negative inf uh, negative infinity, or I should say a float, anything from a negative infinity to a positive infinity, take out two, five, and seven. I don't know what whatever types of parameters you want. And you can rigorously test your code uh, with Scala Check. So the idea behind it is you don't have to come up with fake data all the time. You could actually let the computer do that for you. And so what that would do is it would give it hundreds, maybe thousands of different parameters, hit your test code, and uh, see what happens, whether you get a, a positive or a negative from that. And you can create fake objects of any structure too, right? Yes, you can create fake objects. You can even tell it to create uh, uh, fake mocks. You can do uh, just about whatever you want. It comes with some predefined generators 
but if those aren't applicable for you, then uh, you can tell uh, Scala Check to create your own different objects uh, to test your code. So something that I may do is I may have some custom objects, but I may fill them up with pre you know some of the Scala Check predefined strings, integers, floats, and so on to create my user defined objects, and I'll use those user defined objects to then hit my subject under test. And you can also limit the types of data to say, for instance, you want only printable characters, only ASCII characters, something like that. Yes, uh-huh, yep, absolutely. Now, you uh, told us about a few of the recent changes, and I can tell uh, from your writing that there's a lot of changes going on. There's a lot of development all the time. What are some of the upcoming things that you're looking forward to in testing? Uh, let's see. So um, I'm I'm usually just the uh, the fan behind uh, these excellent frameworks. So you know whatever is uh, is coming up, uh, I think I'd like to uh, take a look more at uh, the acceptance testing side of things. I'd like to use more uh, cloud-based uh, testing ideals that are out there today. Um, that has my interest. I don't think it has any benefit for test-driven development just because test-driven development, again, is isolated. But what I'm talking about are the, uh, phase, the testing phases that you have after TDD and after unit testing. Some of those, uh, some of those do intrigue me. Um, so I'd like to see uh, what, there, what more there is to something like that. Um, as far as the test-driven development, I'm just uh, looking very sharply at uh, at what Scala test is uh, coming out with, what Specs two is coming out with, and uh, and to see um, you know some of these new specs that uh, they may be introducing uh, down the line. Well, thanks a lot for talking to me today, Daniel. All right, I enjoyed this. I uh, look Thank forward you. to seeing how the uh, how the public receives your book. All right, thanks again, Andy.